as at least 19 students and two teachers are dead and another 17 people, including the shooter's grandmother, wounded following yesterday's horrific shooting at a Texas elementary school. Multiple agencies are looking into what prompted the alleged gunman, 18-year-old Salvador Ramos, to go on this deadly rampage as they comb his social media, try to reach anyone who knew him, and look into how he got his gun. Tonight, there's going to be a prayer vigil. That's where we're going to find Fox 26's Matthew Seedorf. Uh, Matthew, you're standing there. I'm sure emotions are running strong. You were able to go into Uvalde just yesterday. Take us through what the past couple of days, the last 24 hours, has been like there on the ground. Yeah, it's been a very long, just emotional, and I know you mentioned horrific uh, 24 hours for the town of Uvalde. We've seen people trying to come together, uh, bringing food and water to those that lost loved ones, but just really emotional uh, just for the whole community. Uh, and tonight this prayer service will be good for them to kind of come together and just be together and cry together. But we're also learning now more details about what happened yesterday at this school. A tense investigation now underway in Uvalde, Texas, into one of the deadliest school shootings in U.S. history. These are some of the faces of those killed, two teachers and 19 young elementary school children. It's not a good sight. Like, I can't get it out of my head. Patricia Chapa lives just a few houses from Robb Elementary School. I saw the kids when they came out. They were drenched in blood. Like, we know everybody. It's, it's hit home. It's hard. Investigators now believe this 18-year-old gunman from Uvalde posted to Facebook within 30 minutes of the bloody school massacre, saying, I'm going to shoot my grandmother. Later posting, I shot my grandmother. Then 15 minutes before crashing a car outside Robb Elementary, he shared, I'm going to shoot an elementary school. Sir, you are out of line. Democratic candidate for governor Beto O'Rourke interrupting Republican Governor Greg Abbott's press conference with a yelling match. Sit down. Jeff. You're out of you're out of line and an embarrassment. Hey. Sit down and don't play this stuff. Then getting sent to the parking lot. Do you think this was the right time to do this? I mean, some people are calling it a publicity stunt. If if I didn't think it was right, I wouldn't be here. The two running against each other in the upcoming November election. This wasn't Beto. politics today. This is, this is about change, and, and the only way that we're going to change is to stop this from continuing to happen. The small town of Uvalde now coming together, giving food supplies and love to families in mourning. We're broken, but we're, we'll get back, you know, we'll, we'll be strong and we'll get back together. We all just have to stick together. So Daytona, many people still wondering why this happened. Authorities are still investigating a possible motive. This vigil begins in about 45 minutes. Matthew, um, a really tense couple of minutes there. I have to ask you about that press conference, that outburst from Beto O'Rourke as he showed up to this event. He was not necessarily invited to it, showed up unexpectedly and then being escorted out. You were able to speak with him one on one, kind of explain everything surrounding this event today. Well, yeah, it was just shocking. I mean, no one really realized that he was there. I, mean, I think I heard some people yelling, is that a reporter? Right. Um, and then we started to realize that that is Beto and yeah, he's running for governor against Governor Abbott. Uh, and then he got kind of escorted out. And then there was this uh, kind of media mob second press conference going on in the parking lot as he was walking to his car. And that's where I caught up with him and asked him those questions. So. Uh, definitely some intense moments there in, in the parking lot. Yeah, and the press conference continued inside with Governor Abbott, with those local authorities, and the mayor of Uvalde also saying some choice words, frustrated uh, with Beto O'Rourke coming in and, and kind of breaking up the press conference as, as well. But they continued on with the investigation, uh, which we're all going to be watching here. We're now learning more about those text messages. Anything to be keeping our eyes on in particular here? as you were able to hear it firsthand. Yeah, I, I think what most people are wondering is a, a possible motive, and, and I don't know if we'll ever know, um, but also just more about the victims. And, and maybe tonight uh, is it one of those nights where we can kind of learn more about these kids and these teachers that, that died. Yeah, some of the families haven't really spoken out yet. We have heard from a few of them. Um, last but not least here, uh, the grandmother of the shooter of Salvador Ramos. 
Do we know anything more about her condition at this time? I have not heard an update on her condition, but I was told that she's the one that alerted police uh, after, which is remarkable because she was shot in the face. Right. But she's the one that alerted police after that, and then there was the chase that went to the school, and just that's when the, the massacre unfolded. Yeah, still so many questions surrounding this event um, and a lot of mourning to be done uh, at this prayer vigil that starts within the hour.